Hello, all you wonderful people out there in the dark. Thank you again so much for checking in. Uh, as you can see today, I want to talk a little bit about my Remington Rand uh, Streamliner typewriter. Now, this typewriter uh, is from 1941. Uh, the serial number is, what is it, B107523. Uh, but before we get into this little fella, I thought, uh, as always, we should give a brief history about uh, Remington itself, the company. So, we go all the way back to 1865. Um, 1865, as you know, the, the Civil War is coming to a close. And at that time, Remington, uh, Philo Remington and his boys, are probably the largest supplier of firearms, guns, and whatnot in the country. Well, these fellows are smart enough to know that you can't continue to make guns when there's no war. So they begin to diversify a little bit into agricultural equipment, you know, farming equipment, um, and some sewing machines, which ends up being very, very successful for them for many, many, many years. Uh, but in 1872, uh, Philo, he gets a letter from this cat named James Densmore. Now, James Densmore, uh, for you typewriter enthusiasts, you'll know who he is, but just very brief, high-level history. Now, J James sends Philo uh, a letter, and it's not handwritten. It's actually uh, typeset, and he goes into a, a sales pitch about this new machine that uh, he'd like Remington to basically make an investment and begin making called a typewriter. Now, at that time, typewriter was two words, or one word hyphenated, type hyphen writer. And Densmore, he had partnered with this cat named Christopher Scholes and some other folks um, who were, Scholes is basically considered the founder or the inventor of the, of the typewriter. Um, but he and several other people have been you know, working on this idea and it hasn't been very successful and they're very close to bankruptcy. So Den, Densmore reaches out to Philo and the Remington company. I'm sure they go back and forth, back and forth, but eventually they agree to manufacture the, well, what became known as the Scholes Remington typewriter. Um, obviously modest success because it hasn't found a home yet and it's continuing to evolve. Um, but uh, ultimately, I believe in 1873, Remington eventually enters the market on its own with the Remington Model 1 typewriter. Now this Model 1 bombed, uh, not a hit at all, uh, which I'm sure much to the chagrin of Philo and others. Uh, but you press on, and in 1878, the Remington Model 2 came out, and you'll never guess, huge hit, huge, huge, huge hit. Um, they go on to make, continue to make other models, and about 1886, Philo decides it's time for him you know, to retire. Yeah. And he ends up selling the typewriter division, if you will, to uh, some of his colleagues uh, within Remington. And he, he sells the name Remington as well, or licenses the name, I suppose. But they choose to call the company the Standard uh, Typewriter Manufacturing Company. Well, they go about making you know, typewriters uh, through the late 80s. And about 1902, they've now changed their name to the Remington Typewriter Company. 1927, so you know, 20 plus years later, they essentially merge with uh, Rand uh, Cardex and become the Remington Rand uh, Typewriter Company. So in 1941, the Streamliner is introduced, and at that time it was $49.50, which is a tremendous sum of money, uh, quite frankly, in 1941. This is the Mac Pro book. 1941. They're, they're selling about 1,500 units a month, give, give or take, which isn't really record setting. Uh, and the early models, which this one is, you can see in Streamliner here, uh, the, the sort of lines emulating gusts of wind. Uh, this existed on the, as I was saying, the first few models, and eventually this, this has changed over to a cleaner, just sort of block type. Uh, unfortunately for the Streamliner, we all know what happened in 1941. So the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor, we ultimately enter World War II, and Remington goes back to doing what it does best, making guns. Uh, this time to fight the Germans and the Japanese and the Italians. And everybody else, I suppose. But 
they ceased manufacturing of uh, the Remington Streamline. I think the last model rolled off the line uh, out of March, April of, of 1942, you know, based on what they were manufacturing, what they sort of had in the queue. And that basically spelled doom for the Streamliner because the war, war ends in 45, um, and things have moved on, typewriters have changed some. The company itself um, brought the name back in the 50s, but by then, portable typewriters were mostly plastic. I mean, this is all metal, uh, metal keys. Uh, it actually weighs about 10 pounds. So in the 50s, the mid 50s, uh, the plastic model is much, much lighter. Um, and it really never took off. Uh, and as you all know, Remington, ultimately, I think they, they start working with Univac uh, in, the, in the 60s, which is some of the first computer systems. And they merged or were purchased by Sperry Corporation, I think in 1955. And eventually, just like every other typewriter company, they, they sort of uh, fade into uh, history. But anyway, let's put a piece of paper um, and we'll do uh, uh, just type a couple letters, give you a sense of what this typewriter is like. Uh, like I said, it is a lovely machine. It weighs, I don't know, 10 or 11 pounds. Uh, mechanically speaking, it's as sound as, uh, it's as, sound as it can be. Uh, there are better typewriters uh, that were out. I'm a huge Smith Corona, uh, you know, silent super, uh, but that's a heavier typewriter, slightly different. But again, I think for most families, this was uh, this was a perfectly good typewriter for home and then office for the person who didn't type letters all day long. But let's grab a piece of paper and check this baby out. Okay, so. I'm saying the Remington Rand Streamliner. I do have the case for this in metal keys. You can see I've already typed a few things. The ribbon is quite dry, but it's got it's got decent action. It sounds nice. But it, oh, there's one stick, so probably need to do cleaning. Another sticker. But uh, it is typing. Um, again, 1941, we know this is an early model because you can sort of see the wind wisping through steam, uh, streamliner. Uh, actually, take a look. Here's a picture of, uh, of one without the gusts of wind. Sort of, you'll see the block letters. Just take a look right here. Anyway, so... Not a whole lot to, uh, to really share. Again, uh, you can see here, it get designed for putting it back in its case. Let's get you a shot of the back here, pretty simple. I think the basic body of this went on to become a Monarch 5 and some other things. They, they basically just canceled out the, the name Streamliner. Obviously, it's very Art Deco. Um, and by the time we get through World War II, uh, that style is, is, of course, coming to an end. But um, all in all, a very nice typewriter. I think it's reasonably affordable. Um, a great thing to add to your collection. Um, actually, here at the end of this video, I think I've got a couple of pictures of the Streamliner when it's gone plastic, and you'll kind of see what I mean. But uh, again, all in all, a nice typewriter. And as always, you know, check out the uh, typewriter database. It is a great resource for information. So there you have it. The Remington Rand Streamliner, early model. Uh, all in all, a decent portable typewriter. Uh, I don't think they're particularly rare. Maybe some of the earlier models are, obviously 41, 42. But the later models, when they're plastic, I think are a lot easier to find from the mid 50s, I think through the early 70s. Uh, as I said, I th think this body was uh, used again and again um, for the Monarch 5 and some other models. But uh, check out uh, the typewriter database. Uh, it's a terrific resource for information. Um, do some research. But uh, again, I'm proud to have this in my collection. We'll do some more of these. Um, as always, though, 
in this world, and you can be anything in the world you want to be. Be kind, be humble, be forgiving, and be melting snow. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. I'll try to do some more typewriter videos. I will put this onto uh, the typewriter playlist that I have on the channel. Take care. So for all you Easter egg hunters out there, Jordan, did you get the Animal House Easter egg in the video that you just watched? If you didn't, you better watch it again.